Hey guys, welcome back. In this tutorial, I'll be going over how to set up authentication for your app using Superbase. And Superbase, if you don't know what it is, it is a backend service that allows you to work with databases and users. And there's a whole lot of other features, but today we'll be focusing on authentication. In the end, we will have built this simple app where we can sign up and log in. So for example, I can sign up using my email. I'll, I'll use a fake email. I'll use samir at gmail.com. And for the password, I'll just make it the same. Now, once we sign in, it'll say our username. So it'll, or like our email, it'll say hello, and then it'll say your email. And you could log out. Now, if you need to log in, you could log in with the same data. So we can enter our email and our password, and we can log in. Now, today we'll be building this using Superbase and React. First, go ahead and go to superbase.com, and then sign in or sign up. And once you've made your organization, you can actually go to the projects, click new project. Our project name for this, I'll just call it YouTube. And for the password, we can just click generate a password. It doesn't really matter. We can click create a new project. Once our project has been created, we can go down and we're going to need these two URLs, the project URL and the API key. So just copy the project URL and put it somewhere safe. I'll put it in a notepad. And also go ahead and copy your API key. I'll paste that here as well. Once you've done this, go on over to authentication. It's in the tab on the left. And then click on sign in slash providers. And down here, click email. And we're going to disable confirm email. Now, in an actual project, you probably want to enable this, but for the sake of uh, complexity and to make this video pretty short and not too long, we're going to disable this. Now we can click save. And once you've done this, we've basically set up everything on the Superbase end. Now we just need to program everything. I've opened up an empty VS Code window and we're going to create our React. So we'll do npm create v at latest whoops, npm create v at latest. We're going to title this here. I'll just title it authentication. We'll choose React JavaScript. Now we can cd into authentication and we can do npm install. This could take a while, so I'll come back when it's done. Once your project has been set up, we also need to install Superbase. So to do that, just do npm install at superbase slash superbase dash js. Now this just installs the create client for our superbase, which we can use to actually put our API key and our URL. So once you've installed everything, we can run it. So we'll do npm run dev and we will open up localhost 5173. So let me open this up. So in our uh, browser, We'll just go to localhost 5173. So there we go. So this is our React app. We can actually get rid of all the boilerplate code. So we can go to app.jsx and we can delete everything and just type RFCE and click enter. If the RFCE command doesn't work for you, go to your extensions here and search for React. And you want to install the first one. Once you've got that, we can close our explorer and we can uh, begin programming our authentication app. First, let's get all of our imports out the way. So alongside React, we'll also import use state and use effect. Use state so we can store the email and the password that the user types in. And the use effect will first run when the user comes to the website so we can check if they're already logged in. Now, we also need to import um, create client from Superbase. So we'll import in the curly brackets. In here, we'll do create client from at superbase sl uh, slash superbase dash js. Create client just lets us connect our React app to our superbase backend. So under the imports, we can do const superbase is equal to create client and under here, we'll make our first quotation mark. And this is actually the URL. So the URL that you got from your Superbase, paste it there. 
add a comma and under here add other add another quotation mark and this is actually going to be our API key so you can paste that right there save it normally you would not put your um, API key or your URL in the front end instead you will probably have it in an environment variable but for the sake of simplicity we'll just keep it right here so we can easily access it now we can begin programming the HTML and functions for when the user logs in, logs out, or signs up. In our app function, let's make three state variables first. So we'll do const email and set email is equal to use state empty parentheses, or I mean empty quotation marks. We'll make a const password and set password equal to use state and empty quotation marks. And we will also do const user data and set user data to be equal to use state and we'll make the initial value null. After this, let's work on the use effect, which will first check if we even have some user data. So what we'll do is we'll do use effect parentheses, another parentheses, and we will make a arrow function, curly brackets, and after this we'll add an empty array. Now in the curly brackets, we can make a asynchronous function. Let's just call this check data. And after this, we can run it. So we'll do so. We'll just run check data. In our function, let's access the superbase over here and check if we have any data. So to do this, it's pretty simple. All we have to do is we have to do const data and error is equal to await superbase dot auth dot get session what all of this does is we're making two variables data and error and depending on what our superbase uh, gives back to us that's what we're going to store these two as so await superbase dot auth dot get session all this is doing is this is just getting the browser and it's checking if we have a superbase uh, or like any authenticated users already in our browser. Under here, we can uh, check if we have uh, some errors or something like that. So under our um, const right here, we can set data or set user data to be data, which is right here. Now, once we save this, we're essentially done with our use effect. So every time we load in, it's going to uh, check our backend to see if we have any uh, data or any users already logged in. For our HTML, let's first check if we even have any data stored in our user data state right here. So to do this, we'll do um, user data question mark dot uh, session is not equal to null question mark and then we'll add a uh, parentheses in here we'll add a div and under here after the ending parentheses we'll add a colon and then we'll add another parentheses and in here we'll make another div so what we're doing here is uh, we're basically checking if we have any data and if we do we want to display this right here but if we don't have any data then we're going to want to display this and uh, for the bottom one this is gonna be uh, the inputs for our um, uh, email and our password. So uh, let's actually delete this bottom div, add a HTML fragment, and then we'll make the div. And in the div, we'll add a input. We'll make this email. We'll make the placeholder be uh, enter your email. We'll also make another input. We'll set the type to be password. And we'll make the placeholder be choose a password. And we'll also make a button that signs up the user. Now we can copy all this stuff. And under our button, we'll add an HR tag. And then we'll copy uh, and then we'll paste it. Only difference is instead of saying choose a password, it'll be enter your password. And instead of sign up, it'll say login. If we save this, there we go. Since we're not actually logged in already, it's going to display this 
um, HTML instead of this. So now we can make the input so that when we start typing, it'll actually save it on our state variables right here. So after the first input, we'll do on change. We'll make an event, and we will set um, set email to be e dot target dot value, and we can actually copy this for our email down here also. And for our password, we'll just do on change. We'll make an event, and we will set the password to be e dot target dot value. And likewise, we can copy and paste this for the password down here also. So if we save this, there we go. And now under our use effect, let's make two functions, or actually three functions. So they will be asynchronous functions. So the first will be async. Uh, let's make this sign up. No, async function sign up. And the other one will be async function login and the other one will be async function logout so we can save this and in our uh, sign up button we'll do on click well, we can just log uh, or run the sign up function right here and for our login button we'll just do on click we'll uh, run the login function so let's start programming the sign up code. For our sign up function, all you have to do is you have to do const data error is equal to await superbase dot auth dot sign up curly brackets and in here we're gonna sign up with the username, which is going I mean the email, which is gonna be the uh, email right here from our state variable and the password. It's going to be the password that we saved in our state variable. Now, after we ran this through Superbase, we must check if there's any errors. So, if errors, then we'll just um, alert error signing up. I may have misspelled that. I'm not sure. Else, if we don't have any error, then we can just set user data to be uh, that data that we got. And then I guess we can just console.log it. But in the real world, you probably don't want to console.log it. Now we can save this. And for our login, it's actually pretty similar. For the login, we can just do const data and error is equal to await superbase.auth.sign in with password. And also curly brackets. In here, we'll put the email being the email and then we'll set the password to be the password now under here we can just check if there's any errors if error then we can alert um, error logging in uh, in else if there are no errors then we can uh, set the user data to be the data that we get and we can also console.log it now uh, we can save this and for our logout function it's pretty um, pretty simple all we have to do is do uh, const data and error now in most case you probably won't even use the data and the error when you're logging the user out but we just have to put it here. So we'll just do await superbase.auth dot sign out. And then we can just set user data to be null. Because since there's no users in the function. Now we can save this. And we can actually set up for when the user actually signs up or logs in. So for this div, we can remove this, add another fragment, and in here we'll add a div. And in the div, we can just make an h1 that says hello. And then after this, we'll make curly brackets. We're going to access the user data. We're gonna get. We're gonna go in the session. We're gonna go in the user, and then we're gonna do the email. And under here, we'll just make another button that says log out. 
and we'll make it on click so when we click this we'll just run this function right here uh, whoops there we go so we can save this if we run our app we can sign up using an email so for the email I'll just make a random one I'll just do subscribe at subscribe.com and for the password I'll just make it the same now if we sign up there we go it'll say hello subscribe at subscribe.com and even if we refresh or even re revisit the website our data will still be saved now we can log out and we can actually log in with the same data there we go it'll say hello subscribe at subscribe.com and we can log out so there we have it guys this is just a simple tutorial on how to use Superbase authentication for beginners if this video was helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.